Now, um, I'm sorry to say that the same thing is true of slavery. Um, it was essential, of course, that there be Christian anti-slavery movements, and I don't say that there weren't, and Christian anti-slavery activists, because th theirs was the responsibility. The warrant for slavery was biblical to begin with. The warrant for slavery was found in the Bible and preached by the churches. The motto of the, the Confederacy, when they de declared they'd rather have a war than give up the peculiar institution, was Deo Vindice, God on our side, God with us, God will, God will vindicate us. Uh, for, ev for every Christian who was an anti-slavery activist, there were millions and millions of Christians who did not just passively but actively supported the institution, whereas the, the main founders of the American Anti-Slavery Society, men like Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Paine, had no God. So your point, I'm sorry to say, falls. Um, now, just on the point that um, Dennis made, he confused my, uh, my remarks about the chaotic and disordered and undesigned nature of the cosmos and the universe with the demand for everything to be just. I didn't say everything should be just and we should complain that it's not. I said that if you claim it's ordered and designed, you will have a very serious problem because the into the design and into the order is built chaos and ultimate collapse and nothingness. So that your, the, the, the indictment of your designer will be the same as it would be if you hadn't started to argue in that way. But that there is so much injustice and that there is so much random misery and unfairness is not my problem. It is the problem for those who say, and I'll, I'll rest on this, those who look, at, who look at the idea of a god and who say, a god who would make a penis that needs to be snipped, it's so badly thought out. <laughs> Some designer, the word for this, was, this phrase for this was come, it was, it was come up with by the great poet Fulk Grevel a um, long time ago, he said, if you believe this, then you believe that we are created sick and then ordered to be well. That can only be done by a heartless, cruel, incompetent designer. Voila. If I designed the world, I would have designed it differently as well. I would have definitely made celery fattening and cheesecake healthy. <laughs> I have innumerable designs that I would have done better than God. I have no doubt about it. Absolutely. But uh, it, 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 to me, this is, this is it's, it's meaningless talk. I mean, these are the things that, you know, I argued with kids in the third grade. You know, they'd say, Dennis, you believe in God? I'd go, yeah. Oh, really? You think he's all-powerful? I'd go, yeah. Well, is he so strong that uh, he can make a rock so heavy that he can't lift it? And then they'd walk away thinking they had just, you know, discovered America, that they had just this brilliant insight. Or, well, if everything needs a, to be started, who started God? These are, these are not serious arguments. God is not natural, so therefore God doesn't need to be started. Only things within nature need to be started because everything in nature did. As for design, of course, I told you, I admit it, I have design questions. But when, if you look at the spectacular way in which the brain, the eye, the body works, my brother was at Harvard Medical School when he came to firmly believe in God, and he did so looking at the, at the cell. The in infinite complexity of just one cell with the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi bodies and, and, and everything else that is happening in there. Now, of course, you could say it happened on its own, and that's what I began by saying. Since neither of us has proof for our position, it's, a, to me, a matter of common sense. That's all. One just asks, what is the likelihood of it coming about on its own versus the likelihood of its having been designed? There are scientists who are, who are also stymied by this question, and they have posited, since they, they refuse to believe in a supernatural deity, they have, they have posited that extraterrestrials planted seeds here because it seems so inconceivable that this just happened in earthly terms. Now, as to just a couple of other points that are made, I mean, once a, a secularist says that North Korea is religious, I think, I think that we have gone be, beyond the realm of, of def, definitional terms. It's a completely secular state. If you are religious in, the, in, the, in, the, in a God-based religion, that's what we're talking about. The debate here was about God. Of course, there are secular religious substitutes for God-based religion. 
That argues uh, on, on our behalf, it seems to me, that the human being is designed to find meaning and that in the, the godless universe there is no meaning. And of course there isn't. Yeah, there's subjective meaning. I like gardening. I like my kids. Of course there's subjective meaning, but in the final analysis all is nothing after all. Everything is destroyed. We're all a coincidence anyway. There is no designer. It's all meaningless. Now, here is the question that I'll just have to end with. I just ask you who are atheists to ask yourself the 3 a.m. question. Do you really, really, really believe that in the final analysis all really is meaningless? It's hard. You see, I go, I go through the other entrance to the building of belief. It's secularism that makes me believe. There, that is so obvious to me that it's not possible that this is a meaningless world, then there must be a meaning giver. And that is what we call God. Do I have problems? Who thinks and doesn't have problems? But the purpose of life is not to be trouble free. But one purpose of life is to have meaning and without God, that's when you end up with what you see in your galleries and you see the moral chaos of the secular university. Because without God, all is permitted. And because when there is no God, people don't believe in nothing, they believe in anything. And these are the things that keep me quite balanced. And with all my doubts, I believe in the God that this Torah revealed to the world. Thank you. I must say I love these debates, and I particularly like these rebuttals. I always feel a bit like uh, Winston Churchill said he felt during the Boer War. He said it's always exhilarating to be shot at without result. So <clears throat> I want to I wanna begin by um, addressing briefly slavery. Remember that slavery was for many centuries like the family. It was taken uh, for granted. Uh, slavery was existed in the ancient world, and in fact, you had something very close to what we would consider atheists in the ancient world. Christopher mentioned uh, Lucretius, Epicurus, Aristotle in some sense. He in no meaningful, he posited a first mover. Uh, they were not in any profound way bothered by slavery. Nobody was. Slavery only became controversial within what we could call Christendom. For the first time, slavery had critics. For the first time, there was a movement behind it. That movement would not have existed were it not for Christianity. This point, by the way, can be greatly extended. I mean, for example, human life had very little value in ancient Greece and Rome. The ancient Spartans would leave the sick child on the, on the hillside, happy to find it dead in the morning. That's not the scandal. The scandal is the great atheist thinkers of ancient Greece, Epicurus, Lucretius, Aristotle, knew about this. But they viewed this with complete equanimity. It didn't bother them. It was no big deal. Why? Because the idea of the sacredness and preciousness of every human life, this comes through Judaism to Christianity. These are new things, if you will, that Judaism and Christianity brought into the world. 